today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to me. If you want to give me a happy Mother's Day, you can subscribe to my channel because 70% of you guys are not subscribed that watch. And today we are going to Le Kiosque French Bakery Boulangerie in the south of the island in Tonkrut. And I'm really excited because I've heard a lot of good things about this place. They have amazing cheeseburgers. Oh my gosh, I have a social crab burger. Fresh orange juice. It's very French here. It's super strong. Here are the chocolate things. Chocolate croissants. Raisin custard. This one is... Do you want to cut? Now do this. What? Blow on it? Everybody. Everybody blow on it because it's going to be hot. This is what I can't wait for. It's warm and crispy. They heated it up for us. Mm. Oh my god. It's perfection. They're really buttery, but like not too heavy. Light at the same time. I don't know how they can pull that off. Thank you. Look at this burger. And we got you yogurt, granola. So beautiful. Soft shell crab burger. Fish and chips burger. I love the details on this. Like the wooden tray, French. Newspaper. Look at this soft homemade bun. Oh, <laughs> so Let me see the inside of that one. <laughs> Slow down, you guys. Look how beautiful that is. Hey, that's enough. You want to take that thing out? Open this. Open this. Thank you. It's mine. You can't have any, Luke. You can have any. <laughs> wow, look how soft this is. It's like a souffle. This is how I like my brownie. It is French style. Is it raining? Do your happy face. The boys have had four days off. They had Friday and Monday off. Why was that what? Yeah, like a Buddha day or something? Or King Day? King day. Really? What? The school gave me candy. The school gave you candy? Yeah, I ready to candy. Oh wow, you must love that school then. Yeah. Are you just saying that because you don't want to go to school? 
Christmas address. Leah in high school. So how's school going for our two little boys? Luke loves school so much. <laughs> Luke's having a little bit difficult time adjusting, but Leon actually really likes it. I think Leon likes it way more than Luke. Leon, do you like your school? Yeah. Look at his Not face. Me. Not me. Not you, why? It's me miss mommy and daddy. You miss mommy and daddy? Yes. Oh, Leon, I love you. Do you love mommy? I love you so much. I love you so much. Let's play drummer boy. Ooh, are you hungry? It sounds a little hollow in there. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You're a good boy, Leon. You're a good boy. Hmm? Okay, another story time with Lily. Sorry, I have my kids in the background because it's their day off. My first experience as an expat. I guess you would call it an expat, but I was only six years old. My parents had a dream of living on an island in the Caribbean. And this was mostly the dream of my dad, my biological father. You guys know George. George is my stepdad, but he's like a father to me, my real dad he passed away when i was 24 years old well my parents ended up selling their restaurant in annapolis maryland and they decided to move to the caribbean at first i think they chose the island nevis but they ended up on the island of st bart's which is one of the most beautiful islands in the world and one of the most expensive islands in the world which ended up being a big problem because my dad stopped sending my mom money and she ended up having to get work at a hotel and we ended up having to come back early because their plan was to live there forever. We were just there for a year and a half and it was my mom, my dad's mother and me and Marcy and Chloe was born there. So we had to go to school. Marcy and I went to school there to the local public French school. It's a French island. And we didn't know any French, but my mom taught us how to say, je ne comprends pas, je ne comprends pas. I don't understand. So that's the only thing that we knew how to say. And we went to this school and the teachers, they were old school style. I remember my teacher, her name was Madame Gums and she, had, she was a dark skinned lady. And when she smiled or made facial expressions, her lip pulled all the way up and you could see her gums and she was called Madame Gums. I don't know how that and why that was. So they like to pair the kids off and I was paired with this one boy that drove me crazy. It seemed like all the boys had short shaved heads, which I found out why later on, probably because there was a huge lice problem and me and Marcy got really bad lice when we were there. But this boy would drive me crazy. He would constantly pull my hair and he knew how to pull my hair right when the teacher had her head turned and was facing the chalkboard. And it got to the point where I would try to pull his hair, but he had no hair. And every time I tried to pull his hair, the teacher would catch me and I would be the one that got in trouble. And when you did something bad at the school, the teachers would come and they would box your ears. They would pull your ears. And I don't remember them pulling my ears, I guess. They knew not to mess with me, but they did it to the other kids and it terrified me. And we would have to pair off to walk down to the cafeteria, which was like a block away. And so I had that same boy, I would have to hold his hand. I mean, it was so gross for me to have to hold this boy's hand, who was like my arch enemy. We'd walk to the school and even before we got to the cafeteria, you could smell, you could smell the fried cooking oil because they love to fry fish in this oil. And the food, I don't really remember the food, but I remember it wasn't the food that we were used to eating as American kids. Marcy used to complain so much that the food was so disgusting. And I heard her complain and I agreed. And we both decided that we were not gonna eat this disgusting food and we would have to find ways to hide it. They served like a basket of bread in the center of the table. So we would take the, the sliced French bread and we would hollow it out and we'd stuff our food inside and close it up so that it looked like we had eaten our, our food because if you didn't eat your food, the teachers would come around and 
actually pull your head back and shove the food in your mouth. <sighs> so that was traumatizing. My mom used to give us a little bit of money to go to go into school to have like a croissant before. And we, near the end, we would save that money and not go to the cafeteria and run off into town and buy croissants for lunch. I remember we had this old van that was like our, our school bus and it was about big enough for six, seven, eight kids. And we would get into this van and they would take us home, but there would be like this one hill area that wasn't strong enough. What? Can you go away? There was this one hill area that wasn't strong enough for the bus to go up. So every time we would get to this area, we would all have to get off of the car, get out of the car, and the bus would go up the car, and we would have to walk up and then get back into the car once the, we were at the top of the mountain. And one of the worst parts of, that happened there is the bathroom situation. The school classrooms had the toilet paper in the classroom. So if you wanted to go to the bathroom, you'd have to raise your hand, ask for permission, and then you'd have to take your, the toilet paper in front of everybody and then go to the bathroom because there was no toilet paper in the bathroom. And I started having chronic stomach issues. And there was one time where I was sitting in the classroom and I had an accident. I messed my pants and I was wearing shorts, white, pure white color shorts and it was the most humiliating thing. I could smell, started to smell it. All the kids around me could smell it. The kid, they started to hold their noses and laugh at me and like scoot their chairs from me. And I just was like, put my head down and I refused to get up. The teacher called Marcy, who was in the other classroom to come talk to me. And she was like, you have to get up. You're just faking this. God, just get up. What are you doing? And then I, I just didn't say anything, kept my head down and she left. And then it was, uh, lunchtime, all the kids walk out, get out of the class, leave the classroom to go to the cafeteria, and I just continue to sit there. And it was about a two hour break they had for lunch with recess, because it's the French style. And all of a sudden, I, my, I see the door opening, and my mom's there, and she's carrying a bucket and a sponge and a towel. And she comes in and she's like, are you okay? And I was like, I missed my pants. <laughs> and she was like, oh, it's okay. And she wrapped the towel around me and she took me home. And then the next day I'm like playing in my own world. I'd completely forgotten about it, right? You know, we're, as kids, you completely forget what happened the day before. And then my mom comes out and she goes, Lily, look what I have. And she holds up my shorts and I'm like, not still not thinking of anything. She's like, I got the stain out. <laughs> and then all the memories flood back of the day before. And I was like, thanks, thanks mom. <laughs> really appreciate that. <laughs> well, we ended up leaving the island, yeah, a year after a year and a half and going back to America. But I think living in St. Bart's, living in an island of the Caribbean, I think that planted a seed in me that I always wanted to live in a tropical, on a tropical island. And here I am in Costa Moy today, living probably, in my, like, I don't think there's any better place than Thailand, than Koh Samui, Thailand. Well, I went to a school where they didn't really hit you, but they would box your ears like that. They would pull your ears. Do they do that in Thailand? Yeah, some. happened to you before? Mm-hmm. Not different. Say different, like they spang on your, uh, your bus, you know, and, <laughs> and on the wood stick, you know, like, and you look and you see the mud, like, so they would do that to the girls too, or more the boys? More boy. Quite a girl, they wear like a, what do you call it? Dr a skirt? Yeah, a skirt, you know? Yeah. And they hit like. Oh, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt, you know? And the boy, they wear the short, you know, more skin. But oh, they so they would pull the shorts down, but they wouldn't no, put. No, they would not put the head down, but when they hit the oh. thing, you know, because the skin, the short, not. Not as thick? Yeah, like.
So if you're interested in hearing my mom's version of living on St. Bart's and her experience as an expat, click this button right here. It'll take you to that video. My sister Chloe's interviewing my mom and you can watch that video and my other, my sister's other videos. Make sure you subscribe to Chloe's channel. Give her some support. Thank you all so much. See you in the next one.